Okay. So um, what you're going to need is uh, maybe like a lemony yellow or a very, very bright, um, like a transparent yellow. So I'm going to put some of that on onto my palette first. <clears throat> you may need um, a bit more of an orangey yellow as well. So I'll have a bit of that, not too much. Um, I might even put a tiny bit of um, uh, permanent rose in there as well, which is like a um, sort of cherry, a cherry red. We may have a bit of that, <clears throat> we'll see. Okay, so this is, those are the colors that I'm gonna use um, to start off with. So this one, we're gonna do it um, just purely with paint. We're not gonna use any other techniques other than the paintbrush and water and paint. And then the next ones, maybe we'll try some slightly different effects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, um, a circle of water to, um, figure out where my sun shape is going to come in. And I'm gonna have it sort of up on the left here. So I'm drawing with my paintbrush the water and I'm leaving a dry gap or a dry space in the, um, in the middle. So I'm sort of making a circle with water, leaving a, um, a dry spot in the, the center of the paper. And I don't want this to be too big a dry spot. So I'm just going to make that a bit smaller. Now, what you may have to do to be able to, to do this effectively is um, look at your paper from an angle so that you can see the shine on your watercolor paper. Because that's really going to help you to see where it's wet and where it's dry. Because obviously where it's dry, it's going to be matte. And where it's wet, it's going to be um, shiny. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to extend out that water to the top section of the, of the little piece of paper. And what I'll end up with is all of this wet with a little dry spot just there. And then all of this is dry down here. So let's put a bit more water in there just to keep that wet while I do the next bit, mix up my colors. So then I'm gonna dip now into the with a fairly dry brush. So picking up some strong yellow. So see, it's nice and strong, not put hardly any water in there because obviously we've already put water on our painting. And now what I'm gonna do is run that around my circle. So with nice strong color all the way around, like so. Okay, wash my brush off. Then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the orange, just a bit, not too much. And that's gonna go more on the outside edge. Might do it just at the bottom, not gonna do it all the way around. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the red and that's gonna go outside the um, the orange. Okay, clean my brush off. Now, before all of this is dried, I need to now get some water on there, otherwise it's gonna stay as it is. So what I'm gonna do now is tip it at about 45 degrees. And I'm gonna use some water now, just dropping some water droplets in and around from the yellow, so it breaks out into those other colors. Just gonna tip, keep tipping it just to get those colors moving. Just using the pipette so that they start to run down the, um, down the paper. So they're a little bit heavy. I'll just give them a bit of a scratch with the end of the pipette just to move the color, just to get it to move a bit more. Okay, that's better, starting to move a bit more now. Just creep that out a little bit there. Okay. So now what I need to do is so that I don't have a big band um, 
sitting uh, across the bottom here. I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to run that through these colors, still keeping a little bit of an angle. Still got a bit of a band there. Let's just put a bit more water in there. Just want to run that edge away a bit more towards this corner. There we go. It's so starting to run a bit more now. So again, just wash out the rest of the rest of that. So now what I'm going to do is take some. Um, this is the transparent yellow, it's like new gamboge that you can use um, a transparent yellow or even yellow ochre or um, probably not yellow ochre, sorry, more raw sienna. And again, I'm going to dip it onto the brush and then I'm going to run it as a line up from the corner of the paper towards my sun area. Okay, I'm going to put a fair amount on. So obviously a lot of this is going to get washed out. Just run a little bit of that into that edge as well. Because the next thing we're going to do is run some um, moisture um, from the sun through all of this to create a, um, a softening effect. There we go. So now let's take some water. Oops, where's my lid gone? Put the lid back on. So with the pipette, I need clean water now. I'm just going to suck up some clean water, keep this at an angle, and then I'm just going to run the water through. Just keep tipping it just so I get a sort of reasonably directed um, effect. So that it's not too wonky. There we go. Just let that run all the way down. Bit more water. I'm going to wash out a bit more here. So it's a bit lighter. From the center of our sun. Don't think I should have put the red in. I think that's messed it up. But never mind. Can always do another one. So just clean water. So I'm going to draw a circle all the way around. <clears throat> Oops. I'm going to make it too big. So, and then you can just fill in. The rest of the top part of the paper with with water, trying to keep that um, sun area dry. Don't put water in that in that little circle, otherwise you won't be able to do the effect. Take your yellow. So this is the lighter yellow, and then run that around your sun. Or around your light spot, I should say. I'm just going to fill in a little bit more of the area with that colour. So that's our yellow. Then I'll take some of the orange <clears throat> and we'll have that at the bottom. Of the sun area. Then wash the brush off, take the water, and then you can run the water around 
those colors and even direct it down to this corner. kind of using the water to sort of wash away an amount of the colour to um, stop it being too strong in any one particular area. There we go. Wash a bit more of that off. So you have to put it down fairly strong, otherwise by washing it off you'll end up with no colour. Um, and then there's not much point doing it then. So then let's take a brush, clean water again. It's going to run that through this bottom section. Then take the gamboge or the you know the more golden, the golden yellow. And I'm going to run that in from the corner up towards my sun. Let's expand that out a little bit more. Make it a bit wider. So trying to trying to sort of direct the lines back towards the sun, although the lines themselves, or the brush strokes I should say, um, I'm not fussed if they really stay, because we don't I don't really want them as spokes. But um, when the water runs through it, uh, hopefully that will wash an amount of it away, leaving us a nice golden patch. So now take the pet again, clean water, and then running it from the sun down to the corner. Oops. So just make sure that your, your board is tilted to get the water to run in the direction you want it to run in. So just keep the water flowing through that run, wash out an amount of the, um, the colour. So that you end up with kind of a, a flared effect. Okay, we'll leave that alone. We'll let that one dry again. That one down to dry. Okay, on this one, I think I'm just going to do it just with the yellows. One more time, just going to draw the circle. There we go, fill in. Take the yellow. I'm going to take some of the gamboge yellow. Run that around the outside. of that um, lemony yellow. Turn the brush off. Just gonna work that in just with a bit of water. Not too much, just mopping the color off, sorry, the water off onto a towel down here so I haven't got too much moisture in the brush. Just want to blend out the edge where the transition between one colour to the other colour is. So that it's not um, so obvious. Just blending out the two colours there. 
just so it's really nice and soft. We'll do another one there, just blend that out. And then before it dries, I'm just gonna take some water, run it along the bottom. Oh, that's got glue in it, that's not good. Whoopsie, just for some water. That wasn't supposed to have glue, by the way. Um, run it all the way down. Take the yellow, same as I did in the other one. Run it from the corner, up into those colors. Now I'm going to take some water, clean water, angle the board, uh, sorry, the paper, and then just coax that down to the corner, running it through those colors. just to um, lighten the effect. Maybe to give the, um, the feeling of rays, I don't really want them to be actual rays, but just to give the idea that there's some light kind of lighter going through there, or tissue. mop that excess up. And then I can just put those to one side and let them dry. Um, when we move on to do the, some of the trees. Get some stuff ready. Then all I've put out on my palette is um, I've got some cerulean blue. Uh, this is indigo, which is a very dark blue. If you don't have that, you can use like Prussian blue or um, even French ultramarine should be fine. This is some purple. And obviously we still got the yellows that we use for the sun, some orange and uh, the um, permanent rose, the red color down here. So those are the colors we've got out. Since we're just going to use one color, which is the indigo and um, the uh, yellow. So that's all I've got here. So I'm using a brush with a nice point on it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to give yourself a, um, a kind of a, a nice strong vertical. So I'm going to come in from the top of the paper, coming down, like so. So a bit of a, a direction for where we're going to be bringing our um, branches and that kind of thing. Now, fir trees start out, start from the center. So using the tip of the brush, we're going to want to come out from the center on both sides. So like little um, <clears throat> kind of curled marks. So they come from the center, out to the edge, from the center, out to the edge, gradually getting um, longer or wider, I should say, as you come down the tree. The thing to watch, what you don't want to do, is all of the spaces between the, um, the lower branches being at the same distance, okay, in terms of gap. You wanna make sure that you randomize as best you can so some of them you can make more blocky, some of them you can stretch out like this so you can miss a bit and then go a bit further to make it a bit more um, organic looking. But you just wanna keep that color coming down the tree and getting wider as you sort of come down. And as you get into the bigger um, marks, then obviously you need to make sure that you've got plenty of paint in your brush. 
um, let's miss a mark there and go bigger still as we come down to the bottom. Okay, so there's one. Let's do another one. So again, put a bit of a vertical. Let's come a little bit lower with this next one. So let's start from about here. So there's my vertical coming down. So you don't want to start right at the very top. You want to come down a few millimeters um, with your first marks. Otherwise you end up with um, a kind of a hat on top of the tree rather than a bit of the trunk kind of showing through. So little crisscrossy ticks. Try and make it as random as possible. So don't try not to control it. Coming all the way down to the bottom. Um, and then the bottom of the tree, you don't have to show the trunk. You can just, you know, you can kind of suggest maybe some um, foliage or rocks. And in the reference, there's lots of foliage. So you want to sort of lose the bottom of the tree into um, just marks, basically. So you don't have um, necessarily a trunk right at the bottom. Right, let's do one more just in the background. So this one's gonna lean slightly the other way this time. And I'm gonna bring it up behind. Oh, is, you, are you using a rigger with that? Um, this one's a dagger no. brush, but um, oh, you can use I a thought. rigger. A rigger's yeah, fine. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So one more then, um, kind of coming at a slightly different direction, coming down from the top. Again, I'm gonna give you a bit more gap this time give it a little bit longer um, space on top. And then maybe miss a bit more as well. So it's not exactly the same as the other trees. Coming all the way down. And as you get into the other trees, you can just bring those colors together like so. Okay, let's have another go um, on another piece of paper. So we're gonna do the same type of tree except this time we're going to try and change the color um, as we're sort of coming down uh, the tree and maybe even giving um, some of the edges of these fronds a slightly different glow to them as we sort of come down the, the branches. So we'll start it off with um, exactly the same colors we've just used. So that's the green. So the indigo and the, um, the yellow. So I won't change the color to start with on this first tree. We may do on the next one, but for this one, we'll just keep it the same. Put a bit more water in there, too much. <clears throat> okay, so let's do a similar style tree as the one we've just done. So again, give yourself a good strong vertical, maybe at a slight angle coming in from the top of the picture, coming down. And then again, just using those little um, crisscrossy marks, start to bring the um, branches and foliage and all that good stuff um, kind of down. Now I'm gonna go that far. And now what I'm gonna do is change color. So I'm going to dip now into, let's go make it more blue. So it's not, it doesn't have to be too realistic. Just want to go a bit more bluey purple. There we go. Let's make it a bluey purple one. So the only thing you need to remember is to keep the paint relatively thick so that you don't cauliflower from one bit to the next. And then I can start to introduce this back into um, the colors that I've just put on and then continue that seamlessly all the way down. And it's gone from green then to a bluier um, kind of purple tree. Okay, so if you were doing sort of a snow scene, then that would be ideal. You know, you could have a nice sort of blue looking tree rather than a um, 
rather than a green one. Okay, so that's a transition from one color, obviously, similarly, like we would do if we were doing a wash, but trying to keep the shape. So we do it by putting the um, original color at the top, then we went into the purple and then into the more blue as we sort of come down. So let's do another one of those. But this time, um, I'm going to start off with a lighter color and then we'll go darker. So let's go with some very light yellow or yellowy green. So it's the same, same color as I was using previously. It's just got more yellow in it. Let's put out a bit more yellow on my, on my palette. <clears throat> So it's a really nice, strong yellow green. A little bit more water. So this is going to have quite a light top to this one. So let's do the same thing. So let's bring this little tree um, in a little bit. So again, a nice vertical coming down. And then just start your crisscrossy marks coming out from that vertical, leaving some gaps. Again, remembering not to make the gaps all the same, same size. You can even miss a few gaps if you wanted to, um, but it just needs to get slightly wider as you're coming down. So there we go. So now let's change the color. Now let's give it a darker bottom. So I'm going to go into the original indigo and yellow and then follow that. So I'm going to actually run a little bit of that up through the center and then continue that down through the bottom of the tree to make it nice and dark at the bottom. So then we end up with a, a dark Oh, sorry, a lighter top and a darker bottom to the tree. Let's just tip that a little bit more to get that coming down a bit. So that's then transitioning from a light to a dark. So again, starting off with the, um, the vertical, so a nice strong vertical, coming out from the center, Exactly the same way. Maybe you want to miss a bit if you don't want the whole thing to go all the way down. Perhaps you can continue your vertical a little bit further out, miss a few bits. So just all in one color to start off with. Like so. Clean the brush. And then I'm going to go and dip into some of the, um, the orangey color. And I'm going to work a bit of that in on this left hand edge of the, um, of the tree. So just with the very tip of the brush, just running some of that color into the already wet paint. So some of these orangey colors just on the left hand side. Coming down, take a bit of the red. Again, using it pretty thick because obviously we're going into an existing wash. So I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna run a bit of red into the, um, these colors. here and there. And then the final one will be the dark color. So again, clean the brush. And then I'm gonna dip back into my original indigo and yellow. And then I'm gonna darken up um, over the top into that wet wash. Uh, some of the right hand side over the top of those existing colors um, in the tree. 
So then we get a mix of colors all in the same tree. Um, that give us the kind of the impression that we've got some different color in there all the way down and then we can just lose the bottom into some rocks or whatever you want to have at the bottom down there even put a bit of slightly different color like so that Okay, so let's give this a go then. So um, what we're aiming for is to, when we're bringing our little tree sort of branch shapes, we don't wanna lose the whole sun because obviously <laughs> we lose the whole effect, but we do need to um, lose some of the yellow and some of the shape around it. So it looks like it's through the tree as opposed to um, on top of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off on this top left hand corner and in the reference it's kind of a big bunch of just foliage but I'm going to do it with um, the stylized trees that we've just been playing around with. So I'm going to bring a mark coming in from the top like so and then using our little crisscrossy kind of um, method. So I'm just bringing that down and then as we kind of get to the, the, um, the sort of sunset or the sun, the light kind of showing through, if you can leave some little holes in your mark making, <clears throat> you'll get some of that yellow kind of poking through the, um, the kind of the tree effect. So you don't want to lose all of the um, color from underneath. So there we go. I'm just going to bring that tree probably to about there. And then this is all going to be rocks down there. Let's do another one on the right hand side of it. I'm going to bring a slightly lower one, just the same color. So another vertical. And then little crisscross marks. Just over the top. And then I might even link these trees together a little bit. Again, trying to leave some of this pinky yellow kind of color showing through. Just a few marks at the bottom. Do another one now. Let's do another taller one kind of coming this way. Bring now a little bit more, a bit wider. <clears throat> Come a bit wider still. Perhaps this tree's in front. So let's lose some of those marks, like so. A few marks at the bottom, and job done. The, um, the lower sections we're going to blot off an amount of the um, the green. So that's the idea. Okay. So again, using exactly the same colour, just the um, indigo and a bit of yellow in it. Um, start off on again this left hand side. So let's just get some of these trees in up here. Might come a bit bigger on this one, come into the sun a bit more. So I'm going to need to work reasonably quickly on this one because obviously I don't want them to to um, to dry before I can blot it off. So there's one. Let's do another one here. So let's come a bit higher. Let's cover up the sun a little bit more on this one. So we'll get some big bits of colour coming down bit more and then we'll have a higher one over here. So obviously these darker colors when they go over the top of the lighter colors will um, enhance the kind of the light effect. Um, so that's kind of the idea. So let's 
bring that down there. Maybe one more little one just at the back here. Okay, now taking the tissue, I want a little bit of directional light kind of, or the idea of some directional light coming this way. So I'm just gonna use the tissue and just blot off an amount of that green just to indicate that there's some light coming through those trees, um, like that. And then we're gonna start off in the same fashion, but we don't need to be as quick on this one because we're not wiping out. We're just gonna leave some of this goldeny color at the edge, uh, eventually on the wash. So let's start off again with um, our trees kind of coming in from this side. So I'm trying not to change too much all in one go. So we've got, so as we sort of progress the, um, the idea of the sun coming through the trees, we're not changing everything too drastically. I want us to, um, try and get to a point where we've got something we can work with um, for next time in terms of technique. Um, that's the objective here really. It's not to it's not composition or anything like that. It's more to do with how are we going to create the light kind of coming through the trees. That's that's really what we're talking about here. So a little bit wider there. So now into this tree, before it starts to dry, I want to introduce my next color. So I'm gonna take a bit of the, the gamboge again and some of the red. So it's a very warm um, brownie, brownie red. And then I'm gonna to start to work that into my tree. Just going over the top of the color that I've just put on. I mean, you can, you can go out a little bit wider, but just to keep it to the same tree shape. So we'll have some of that yellow sort of showing through. But then on top of that, we've got this, this sort of redder color. And they'll mix and they'll merge because obviously the paint's still wet but hopefully we'll end up with a nice um, marrying of those two, those two colors. And then on top of that, we're gonna bring our very dark. So the indigo um, with a little bit of yellow in it. Now try not to cover up everything that we've just painted. So we want some of this over the top, but we want also to see some of those colors that are underneath at the edges. So it's mainly at the edges. So the center of the, the tree can stay very dark, but it's on the extremities is really we where we want to try and keep those, those colors that we've just painted on showing. So then we've got a nice sort of dark center um but a very light kind of frongy edge <laughs> sounds like some sort of cake but uh, that's kind of the idea so coming all the way down and then we get to our base And then we'll just bring some of that down a little bit lower. Again, you want to lose kind of the bottom of the tree into the foliage. Don't really want to see too much of that. Okay. So let's try that process again and see if it does work. So we'll go with the yellow. So again, coming up near the sun, <clears throat> taking that little crisscrossy um, pattern again, 
Let's come out a little bit wider on this one, over the top of the sun. Can make this one a bit more bushy, this tree. Perhaps we'll give it a gap as well, so it doesn't continue all the way down. Like so, take some of the red and the yellow together. Put some of that in. Just mix it into that color that you've just put on. Just remembering that um, it needs to be of equal or thicker color. Don't make it lighter, don't make it thinner. So the paint you're putting down needs to be equally thick. Otherwise it'll um, just cauliflower everywhere. So a nice bit of red, all the way back up into the tree, wash the brush off. And then again, I'm gonna dip into the indigo. Might put a bit of cerulean in it this time, just for a slight color change. So it's a bit more blue. And then coming down with the vertical, and then we can start to work this dark over the top of the colors that we've just, <clears throat> just put on. Again, leaving, trying to leave some of those colors that are underneath showing through. Nice and strong at the bottom. Again, lose the bottom of the tree. Don't need to see that. There we go. Let's do one more, just on the right. This time, let's go slightly more green, lemony green, a limey green for that first color. Just for a slight color change. So I'm just using the, the lemon yellow that I was using earlier with some just a light emerald green. So let's have this tree over here. Let's come a bit higher. So pulling it out from the center. Exactly the same as we've done all the other ones. Can maybe mix that one into that one a little bit whilst the paint's wet. So we get a merging of colors at the bottom. Okay, I'm not gonna bother with the red in that one. Let's go purple. Haven't used any of this purple yet and a bit of indigo in the purple. So it'll be a purpley, much more purple tree. So same process, pulling it out from the center, leaving some of the green on the edges. <clears throat> so we don't obliterate all of that. So we get a glow on the edge of the, or some of that earlier color showing through. And then we can just lose the bottom down there, like, like so. 